Welcome back to another episode of Run Disney 101. This is actually the continuation of our Corrals A to Z video. In the first part of the video, we talked about kind of the pre-race experience, getting to the corrals, and how corrals worked. So if you haven't watched that one yet, make sure to go back and check that one out first. And this is part two of the video. I'm your host, Lake Sprinkle, joined today by my wife, Katie. Hello. And we're going to get back into it. So today's video um, is Corral's A to Z uh, on the course. So this is um, more of what you might experience once the race actually starts. So why don't, since Corral A starts first, why don't you uh, kick us off and tell us how the course might look and feel and um, any like difficulties or positives you feel you may have about from being, you know, higher up in your corrals. Yeah, so definitely more positives than negatives, I would say. Mostly positives. Uh, the race starts, and there is actually still a little bit of congestion right at the start. There is still, you know, 200 or so people all rushing out at once. Uh, now, if you're at a part of the course that's very wide, it's typically not a huge issue. But that first straightaway is still relatively crowded. But after that, it really does spread out pretty well. Um, and you get a lot of runners there for different reasons. Uh, so, you know, some runners who are actually racing are going to take off and, you know, spread the gap that way. Uh, while some people may just be having a leisurely race, even though they're a faster <laughs> runner, they, you know, may leisurely just be there for, for the experience. <laughs> um, so, you know, they'll fall back and you will fall somewhere in between this, depending on uh, how you're racing that day. And I imagine it spreads out too as you like, and you might just be about to say this, it spreads out as you start to encounter like character stops because people will stop. Typically there is a line for the first one or two characters depending where they are or what they are. Uh, for instance, at the Walt Disney World Half Marathon, they had the scene with Wreck-It Ralph and Vanellope with the car and everything, and that had a line. Now, it wasn't anything crazy like you'll get um, later on in the race. It was maybe like 15, 20 people, but for those that are maybe still trying to keep a faster pace and get pictures, um, you may consider yeah. passing that up. A 15-person line, if you average 15 seconds, you know, to get there and, and snap, run, which is how those, you know, it's not a meet and greet. So that would probably be maybe a four to six minute delay. If that, um, I on, I think too, uh, meeting characters, a lot of those people are very much like stop, run through. Um, They're even faster. When yeah, they <laughs> really are. Um, there were many times where we've stopped for characters and it's been literally like a three second interaction. Because uh, we just run up, we a lot of times if we run with a group, we'll all just do the picture together to get it through, unless someone like really wants that individual uh, pick. Okay. Um, but it's just another way so that quick. we keep the speed up. Okay. You know, typically after the first one or two, there's little to no lines for characters, uh, so we'll just run up, snap the pick. If it's a character that we're passing by and there's no one getting picks or in line, a lot of times the characters kind of leave their little area and they'll come up onto the course and like oh, cheer nice. you on and stuff. Nice. We kind of talked about spreading out. Basically the whole race, it just gets thinner and thinner. By mile four and six, so like the halfway point, you're pretty well spread out. Um, you're still always going to, you know, see a couple people in front of you, a couple people behind you. Um, and then once you get to like mile 10 to 13, um, there might be one or two people in front of you, maybe one or two people behind you. Um, and again, though, that does all depend on the pace you're running. Uh, if you choose to run a slower pace that day, then you are going to have more people uh, the further and further start back. To catch up to you. Yeah, you're going to get people from Corral B who are running a little faster who yeah. are going to start to intermingle. Yeah, and that's very true just because... Corral A are all fast runners. There's still a fair amount of people who are in B, C, D, E, even all the way back, who may be, you know, fast enough to be in Corral A, but they, you know, didn't submit the proof of time or they, um, you know, fell back to be in the corral with a, a friend, but once it started, they were running their own race, you know, so you will see fast people in those corrals start to catch up. Um, so that's just, you know, 
something that might happen. <laughs> yeah. A couple other points before we kind of move on to uh, Katie's perspective. Things like water stations, uh, very easy to get through. There are more volunteers holding water than there are people to take them. Uh, typically, the volunteers are kind of like, oh, like, take my water. No, take my water. Here, take my water. <laughs> you know, more water to go around. Uh, little do they know of the mob that's I'm sure they're warned no I they have to warn them (laughs) I mean many of them have also done it many times uh thank you to the volunteers who are volunteers are awesome the last point I kind of put on here and you can ask me any other questions that you want as well one nice thing is I'm typically done before the sun's up and I'll talk later when Katie's talking about uh kind of the advantages or why I think the later corrals definitely do their fair share of work. I'm typically done the races before it gets too extremely hot. Now we're still in Florida so sometimes we wake up for a race at 2 30 and it's It's already 80 percent humidity. (laughs) Yeah but it is definitely better than having the sun beating down on you uh, for several hours on the course. That was actually going to be a question I had because I couldn't remember um, but I was going to ask you, <laughs> I was, I was going to ask you at what point, like what mile during your run does the sun, sun usually come up, but you just said that usually it's not even up by the time you finish. Yeah, it's, so it's usually light out by the time it's I finish, but up, it's not like overhead. up and overhead. Okay. Usually by, I want to say like mile nine or 10, it's bright out already. Okay. Um, and then by the time it's 13, it's fully like, it's daylight, but Usually the sun isn't all the way up yet. Okay, okay. And like Blake said, that brings into a whole slew of points that I'm going to get into about being in a later corral. One thing that I've noticed when I've watched you, you know, some halves that I haven't run and I've watched, I've been able to watch you finish, is um, you have um, a lot less people around you when you, you know, go through the finish, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Um, because it feels like you're, you know, really like winning, you know, individually and and things like that. Yeah, that's definitely another perk. Uh, as I talked about being spread out, I typically get every single photo pass person that I pass. I get multiple pictures from most of them. He takes darn good running photos. He's like (laughs) the best photos I've ever, I usually, he'll get one bad one each race and I scour the photo pass looking for the one She does, picture. yes. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so that's always cool. I usually get a ton of photos, and then a lot of times I get finish line photos where it's just me or it's just me and the people I'm running with, which is also Your very buddies, cool. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Um, another thing, too, when you finish these races, they always have the announcer announcing names, and if you're in a whole, huge crowd, like... You you don't always... I don't think I've ever had my name called. <laughs> yeah, uh, where I've had my name called probably about 50% of the time, um, yeah. and to the point where they definitely recognize, yeah. like, He has who a I unique am. name, too, though. Not, there's not a ton of people in the, in, you know, that run the race that are named Lake. You know, yeah. that's not a common first name, whereas my first name's Katie, and there's 20 million of us around, so. <laughs> yep. Uh, anything else? Uh, that's all I have. Um, I think we didn't um, have this on there, but I think there's also something to be said about um, the after race experience for you. Um, they definitely have this kind of party atmosphere set up afterwards. They have food trucks and music and DJs. You can watch the finishers. You have a good amount of time to experience that and some people will stay until the last runner comes through and they're packing up because it's a whole um you know separate part of the experience that if you if you're into that kind of thing you can do and you you've done it a lot because you'll wait for me to finish what Mm -hmm. do you what do you how do you feel about that event is it something that you would recommend people experience yeah um if you are a faster runner Uh, I think there's definitely a lot to do, actually, at the end of the race. Uh, For instance, they always have finish line characters, and there's usually like four or five, I think at Stars, there was six different photo ops, and uh, when the later corrals get in, that line definitely gets pretty full. They'll get, you know, 45 minutes, even up to an hour for those lines. 
but uh, when my corral comes through, there's, you know, a handful of people in each line. Uh, so typically right after the race, we go and do that, and it's just boom, boom, boom. Uh, a lot of times we don't even have to, like, get in the line. People will just start on one end, and they'll walk right up to each of the characters. Uh, another thing that's cool about that is because it's so spread out and there's not a lot of pressure to move people through, the characters we'll will sometimes give you, yeah, some more interaction time. Uh, I had a really funny interaction with Princess Tiana at The Last Princess <laughs> uh, because, you know, a lot of times when you take pictures with the princesses, they'll go and, like, grab your arm. I was like, oh, like, I don't know if you want to do that. I'm really gross <laughs> right now. And she was just like, oh, honey, like, I was a frog. Let me tell you about being gross and slimy. <laughs> And, like, I actually died. Like, I, like, kind of <laughs> broke the wall there. I was like, that was honestly, like, the best reaction you could have given. Like, that was great. <laughs> That's great. And then um, and a couple other things I know that are there and I know you've taken advantage of. Um, they've started having um, some more food options, like food trucks. Um, and then they, I know they usually, especially after the half marathons, have um, beer available. You know, a lot of people like to have a post-race beer. Like, there's things you can enjoy there. Um, another thing is they have a merchandise tent for leftover expo merch. And if you finish the race faster, you have first pick of the leftovers before they get picked clean. So if there's something you missed or changed your mind about, you might have a chance to get it. Yes, uh, and a couple other things as well. If people did not pick up their pre-purchase merchandise from the expo, there is no expo on Sunday, so that merchandise just goes back into the pool. So they bring that to the expo. Uh, for instance, a lot of time the pass holder pins will sell out, and I was actually able to find they had maybe four or five pass holder pins at the um, little expo tent, and I was able to pick one of those up quick. Another thing that's really cool is all of the posters oh, and stuff <laughs> from the expo get sold at that event. So you can actually go and buy them. They're obnoxiously they're really cool. huge. Yeah, we don't have so, a place to put one or I'm sure we would have picked one up by now. <laughs> yeah, they're always really cool. They're, you know, themed after the races and they say the race. And they're usually about $40, give or oh, take, depending so on the bad. size. Um, but it's definitely a really unique piece of merchandise that someone can get. Yeah. Um, so I think that about covers, like, you know, being in a higher corral. A lot of the things he said will apply when you're in a corral B and maybe even front of C as well, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to talk about being in a lower corral. So uh, if you watched our first video, we already talked about how you're in the corral for a long time. Well, if you are in a lower corral and you're seated the right way, you know, you're in your right corral, you're probably going to be on the race course for a long time, too. Um, a lot longer than it takes this guy to finish a race. Um, so a few things you'll experience, a lot like, you know, Corral A when it goes off, that first initial go moment um, and you're getting through, you know, the race start um, arch, um, there's a bottleneck. I mean, that's mm -hmm. a couple hundred people going through there. One thing they've done to help this in the uh, couple recent years is within each corral they have mini waves. So they'll actually like take a corral and they'll take, uh, volunteers will hold up like a, um, a banner almost and divide the corrals into smaller parts and they'll let them go like about every 30 seconds. And that has actually helped at the start and further down the course reduce some bottlenecks. Every half marathon or, or most of the half marathons have unique courses so most of them have bottlenecks for lower corrals in various places but they're not always the same because the courses change if you're curious about a race that you have run um, you can definitely do a search on facebook in a running group and look at a course map and then there'll be discussion you know all over the internet about where the bottlenecks were in a certain year so if you can find the you know a year that's similar to yours and look it up you'll be able to kind of anticipate where those bottlenecks are typically just a couple really common spots to rattle off quick the pathway between hollywood studios and boardwalk is definitely yep. the big one <laughs> well that's because you have thousands of people running on like a four a ten foot, foot wide path maybe. not even ten foot it's like a four foot sidewalk at some point so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right before you get into almost any park, you end up with some sort of bottleneck. Because uh, you're having to go through some kind of gate, yeah. some kind of thing that's meant for, m at most, a truck to go through. 
Yeah, and typically you get people who will slow down to try to take their phones out, to take video as they're running through the park, so on and so forth. Yep. Now, um, a couple of rules if you're a runner, if you've read a race guide, if you've looked up tips for running a Disney race, um, hopefully you've seen this. Um, a lot of people in lower corrals will be either um, complete walkers, they're speed walking the whole thing, or they're doing the very popular Jeff Galloway method where you run walking, raise your hand, and move to... Um, move to a side. Now, generally, it's said to move to the right side. Disney actually comes out and says move to either side. Mm. You'll get a lot of people arguing with that because worldwide it's supposed to be on the right. You'll see that naturally happen on the right. As you move further into the race, as people get more tired, as, as people who don't have as much experience start to get fatigued, um, sometimes that goes out the window. And if you're a runner or if you're a run walker, the most important thing you can do is just pay attention to your surroundings and have a little bit of compassion. Unfortunately, every race I've ever been in, I've seen one person verbally, you know, say something rude to another person. Every bottleneck I've ever experienced, there has been one runner who has somehow gotten in the back. If they stopped for pictures, if they didn't submit their proof of time, you know, whatever, they're in the back and we're at a bottleneck and there's nowhere for us to run. We can only move as fast as the people going in front of us are moving who are moving as fast as the people in front of them times a hundred. And there's someone, you know, behind us yelling, um, walkers to the right, walkers to the right when we're up against a concrete wall. If you're that runner, just try to have a little bit of compassion and, and <laughs> judge the situation. Yes, it sucks that you can't run and you're losing time, but you yelling about it, I wanted to use a different word, you yelling about it isn't going to change the situation and you're just kind of ruining a moment for everyone else. So that's my soapbox. I'll step off of it. <laughs> yeah, I've done a couple <laughs> 10Ks with her where I've stuck with her and I have experienced that. People don't need to be rude. You know, there's some negative attitudes you may see from some people. My argument in my mind, I never actually like say this to them. My argument in my mind, if you hear that on the course, don't let it get to you. Don't think that um, you're doing a bad job or that you're failing in any means. Think that that person didn't do what they were supposed to do and do their registration correctly. It's nothing that's your fault. And I've actually, I haven't, I've never said that to someone who's been rude, but I have said that to someone who was struggling. I don't like other people ruining the race experience for someone else. That's something that I absolutely hate. But, so let's talk about something more positive <laughs> than that. Um, one great thing about being in a lower corral is you do get to run alongside um, a lot of people who are new runners, who are doing their first half, or who maybe have done house before but have overcome an injury of some sort and who are you know rebuilding their strength and need encouragement. I've needed encouragement. I've had people come up to me and give me supportive words to get through, you know, those later miles. Um, I've, you know, met people, I've, I've run alongside people who have just overcome like amazing things in their lives and you get to have these conversations with them and, mm -hmm. and go along this course with them. And there's an amazing amount of support um, that you'll see in the lower corrals that I'm assuming doesn't really happen in the the front. I feel like the front is more, you know, happy characters. You're making friends. You're running your race. You know, I feel like I'm sure you like push each other, but it's not you're crying because you're afraid you're not going to finish type thing. People are definitely will, you know, come and run up beside you, especially if it's later in the race and um, they think that you're kind of fading. Mm -hmm. um, they'll gladly be like, come on, dude, like, pick it up. You know, you've got a mile and a half to go. Like, let's go. Um, and it, you know, usually helps get you refocused and get your pace back going. Um, another thing you mentioned, too, was kind of the different types of people that you mm -hmm. run with. We all run a faster pace. Uh, another cool thing, though, is that, you know, sometimes you're running with, like, professional athletes. That's you're cool. running with Olympians. Um, it happened to me in my first time running Corral A, which is probably why I thought it was such an intimidating experience, <laughs> was because um, it turned out I was literally standing, like, next to an Olympian, and they, like, came up and interviewed him and stuff, and I was like, oh, <laughs> that's what's going on right now. That's but so cool. going to the back. 
Yes, going back to the back. So that's an awesome experience. Um, you, uh, the, yeah, there's just, it's just this, like, it's almost indescribable, the, the atmosphere. And you, you start to get this feeling, especially because you'll start to fall into your pace of, of the people who are running, you know, the same time as you. So, so about halfway, you'll start realize that you're seeing the same people and they may run ahead of you a little bit. You may run ahead of them, but then you'll see them the next mile Mm -hmm. and you start to get this very big sense of community. Like you're in this together and you're, you're, you know, I may never talk to this girl over here in the pink tutu, but I've seen her seven times and I want her to finish and I'm keeping my eye on her and I'm like, oh, she's doing great. Is this, it's, I don't know, it's this weird feeling. So it's definitely a different atmosphere, but it's not a, it's not negative. It's, it's definitely a positive thing. Um, the camaraderie is there. You'll meet people. One negative thing about being um, in a further corral is you may have to sacrifice some of those character pictures. Mm -hmm. Um, You definitely need to train yourself and you need to really understand what pace you're able to run to finish this. And then you need to think about ahead of time how characters are going to factor into that. Um, So he was saying he may have character lines that are... 10 to 15 people, you may have character lines that have 100 people, and that is not an exaggeration in any way. As you do more races and you see how many people are in a line and you estimate, okay, that's 100 people, it takes, you know, you can kind of see, you know, you'll, you'll watch a few people, you can see how fast they're going through. You know, you may need to do some math. You need to see, see like, okay, every 15 seconds someone is going through, um, there's 100 people in front of me, 150 uh, seconds, you know, how many minutes is that? That's <laughs> So now you're talking more in the 10 to 15. Yeah, minutes. and there have been people who have waited in line for 20 minutes for pictures with a character. You know, I've seen the YouTube videos of, of the people who have done that, and they've talked about waiting for 20 minutes. And that's fine if you know that you are able to still finish ahead of the people who um, – you, of the pay, of the balloon ladies of the of the pace keepers as I like to call them <laughs> I just mm-hmm. made up a word so that's something to keep in mind so you may not be able to stop for all of the pictures now a good thing about the Walt Disney World races is that we have repeats of races now we don't have a lot of new races being introduced and because of that the character stops and a lot of times the characters themselves are. Um, somewhat consistent from year to year. They'll introduce a new one here and there, but you'll be able to go and look up what characters ha- have been there in the past and where they've been, and that can give you an idea, and you should probably plan a little bit of who you want to stop for. Mm-hmm. Um, have in your mind, okay, if I see Snow White, um, she's on my definite list, so I definitely want to stop for her. If I see um, Flick and Ada. Um, from a bug's life, they're a maybe. If I have enough time, if I know that my pace is good, then I'll stop, but I'll not stop, you know, if I'm not doing good. You need to kind of plan that a little bit. Another thing to keep in mind is, like Lake said, there's characters at the end of the race, and there's also characters at the beginning of the race. Yes. Um, they both have long lines. Um, if you want to get pictures with the characters at the beginning of the race, I suggest getting up and getting on the very first bus leaving yes. your resort. Be the first in line so you can get that picture without having to worry about, you know, getting to your crowd before the race starts. And also know if you're a slower runner, your main concern, in my opinion, is finishing the race. You don't want anything to impede that. If there's a character that you know you can see in the park later, if you know you're going to a character dining and they'll be there and you just want to snap that picture with your medal at that point, um, skip them. (laughs) Go find them later when you don't have the clock running down. You know, these are all things that when you're in a later corral, you really need to keep in mind because your top priority should not, should be finishing the race. It shouldn't, it really shouldn't be the character pictures. Those are definitely a perk of running a Disney race. But it's so much more satisfying to finish it. Absolutely. Yeah, a hundred percent. Another thing to keep in mind with photos is the um, cool photos of when you're running through the parks, like in motion, not stopped with the characters. They can be harder to get. Um, you're in a crowd with a lot of people. A lot of times, people are really rude, honestly, and they will see the photo pass photographer. They want their picture. They'll jump in front of you. 
um, their whole group will huddle together and you're unfortunately right behind them and the photo pass photographer can only click their camera so fast. Yeah. One, be courteous to others. Try not to jump in front of them. If you see a photo fast photographer and you're like, I want my picture in front of Tower or Terror, slow down, look for a break, and then you know, get your picture because you're not winning the race by this point. <laughs> <laughs> if you're slower and you want pictures is uh, be a selfie queen or king. <laughs> you can do this with your cell phone. You can take pictures. You can pull over to the side. That you, I always see people taking pictures around World Showcase, mm -hmm. which is good because you can get off the course. You're out of the way. Um, you know, the one thing with that is uh, – always be aware of your surroundings. You don't want to cause someone else to trip and ruin their race. You have to be courteous. Um, I think that's all I have to say about the picture aspect, and that's definitely something that you have to think about a little more um, than when you're in Corral A. Um, you may need more nutrition. Like, I take more nutrition with me than he does because your nutrition is a little bit more based on how long you run as mm -hmm. opposed to how fast you run. It's a timing thing. It's not a speed thing. So I take something about every 45 minutes. And for me, that's that could be anywhere between three and four times on a race course. Mm -hmm. um, and that's important. That's what keeps you going. When you hit that wall, that, that boost really helps you through. I think I've only experienced one time at a water stop at Disney where they had run out of, Gator, or of Powerade. They've always had water every single time. Um, but there was only once, and that was a while ago, so I think they've solved whatever problem caused that that year. I've never had a problem getting what I needed from, from Disney. Water stops are a cluster. Yeah. <laughs> there are hundreds of people trying to get into a single fine line to grab a cup of water. Disney does a really great job organizing it. They make their tables very long. Um, I always go past the first few tables and then go over. And you'll always hear the volunteers saying, there's more water down, there's more water down, because everyone's trying to stop at the front. Um, depending on where those water stops on the race course, that can cause a, um, cause a bottleneck too. Sometimes they're far enough apart to where you can run smoothly up the middle, but a lot of times they're um, squished together, and I just make that a walk break. That's the easiest thing you can do. Just make it a walk break if you're a run walker. Let's see. Oh, the biggest thing, the uh, the hardest thing I will say about being in the leader corral and being out there longer is you're dealing with the elements. It's Florida. Most of the races get hot. Um, some weekends you'll have a 10K that's freezing and then you'll have a half that gets really hot. <laughs> Weather changes in an instant. It's It's brutal. A lot of times yeah. it's not the running that's wearing you down. It's the heat and it's the sun beating down on you. Um, I most of the time wear a hat. Um, it helps. Uh, I wear a white hat so that I'm not <laughs> soaking <laughs> black fabric onto my sun, <laughs> onto my head, if, if that makes sense. But it keeps the sun out of my, um, off my face. And it helps um, keep some sweat out of my face too. Drink water, drink Powerade. I don't train using Powerade, but when I run the races at Disney, I drink it almost every time at each stop because I am working a lot harder in that sun. Mm -hmm. Those that don't know, you are going to burn a ton of electrolytes being just under the sun in general and then doing the amount of physical work that you do. Uh, it's a heavy toll, so you need to make sure that you're um, taking those water and taking those mm -hmm. Powerade stops. Just to put it into perspective, as we mentioned, uh, I typically finish the race right about at sunrise, but many times on courses that may be an out and back, like the Walt Disney World half marathon course or the Princess half marathon course, I have passed Katie when she's at her <laughs> first mile and I've been going into mile 11 or 12. Yep. As we said, sun's just now starting to get hot when I finish. Well, it's basically been hot for her whole race. Yep. Um, so, and that's, yeah, so, um, wear sunscreen. Um, I have been guilty of not wearing sunscreen sometimes, especially if you're going into like a vacation after this, if you're staying at Disney for a few days, you don't want to, you know, have a bad sunburn. They do monitor the weather and if it gets after a certain point, they actually, you know, stop timing the race. They may shorten the course. Um, they will do all of those things if they deem it to be dangerous, but 
Um, I've never actually had that happen at any of our races, and it's we still had races where it was brutal. Mm. They have medical stops at almost every mile. Um, you pull yourself off before you get pulled off, I would say. And and that doesn't mean you have to stop the race, but if you need to like have someone like look at you, I feel like that's like the better thing yeah. to do. That also goes with like prepping for the race for anybody. I mean, you should be hydrating very well leading up to the race uh, you know so you're not just your body's not dehydrated the accomplishment of getting out and being in that heat in that sun or in the rain or in the freezing cold no matter what the situation is and finishing it over you know a 2 45 3 hour 3 30 some people 4 hours you know being out there so long and pushing yourself that hard for so long is an amazing accomplishment and don't let anyone degrade that because they're in better shape than you are or something like that i absolutely (laughs) agree with that at the end of the day we are all doing the same exact distance uh many times those in the back between weaving and bobbing and this that and the other thing are maybe even doing more than that Um, and as we said, you're out in the sun and you're having a longer race in general, a lot of props to you for completing that. Uh, cause I honestly genuinely think that that is much harder than running a half marathon yeah. in an hour and 40 minutes. Until the first time that he actually said that to me, I would always get down on myself for being slower um, for, for taking a longer period of time, I would feel like my accomplishment wasn't as great as everyone else, as, as people who are faster than me, but you know, it's the same distance. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's just as hard. And in some ways it's, it's harder. I actually genuinely do think it's harder. So, so if you have done that or you're preparing for it, don't let this scare you, but like, don't let anyone degrade you for it and Absolutely. and just be so proud of yourself <laughs> and i'm going to like get emotional like thinking of i have a couple of, of friends and family members who are who are getting ready to do their first first half marathon with disney and i'm just like so excited for them to to do it as you can see there are some differences um you know pros and cons and just overall no matter what it's a great experience yeah, absolutely. Um, whether you're in the back or the front, you can have an yeah. awesome time and at I these think, races. And this was this video, kind of these two videos that we did were my idea, and I really wanted to. Um, I I've heard a lot of people like not want to run a race because they're not a certain pace, and I really wanted it to be out there that you can still have an amazing time. And if there's tips and tricks that can help you, you know, get there and and safer and ha- and and more prepared. That's, you know, that's the key, but like, don't let anyone tell you you can't do it. Absolutely. I agree. And that's going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Uh, this second part definitely went a little longer than we had planned. Uh, this was I'm all supposed to be one video. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe below. If you have any tips, anything we forgot, anything you think people should know about running, being in a corral, um, leave that in the comments. We'd love to hear it. Absolutely. And if you have any other questions or any topics that you think we should explore about Run Disney, please let us know as well. We really like Um, talking about it. And yeah, share your experiences as well. Let us know what corral you come out of, um, what corrals you've worked up out of. And thanks so much for watching. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.